on today's episode. Black stuff in it. And so this is fusion. Even in the tight joints, like it just scrapes right out. If it was just in their, their data sheet that we didn't read. Okay, here we are at a customer's house we did uh, back in December of 2014. So it's been about four and a half years. And we did this beautiful bathroom. Uh, Steve did this one. It's porcelain tile with a tight joint and this nice glass mosaic inlay. And we did the complete remodel. We gutted it, jackhammered out the floor. It's a slab foundation, so we got this curbless entry uh, with the line drain here. And everything is beautiful. I mean, five years later, I mean, this looks great, except for the shower floor. Um, and you can see like the pebbles that are in the dry area out here. We have, um, this is antique white fusion grout and it's in great shape. I mean, everything out here is hard and it's clean, no staining at all. Everything in the dry area, even into the shower, it looks really good until you get to the areas that are, see a lot of water exposure and customer called me with a complaint. They sent somebody out here to try to clean this and when he got into it he realized that it was soft and coming out and had this black stuff in it. And so this is fusion crumbling and, and black. Here, here's some spots as I scrape up a little bit you can really see it. And so we have the customs rep coming out to see what is going on in these spots, but yeah, it's just, it's just basically turned to mush and it's black. And, um, you know, Fusion has said, you know, now they tell you not to use it on pebbles. At the time, back in 2014, I don't know if they had that recommendation yet or if it was just in their, their data sheet that we didn't read. But um, it was kind of the, the beginning of fusion and not a whole lot of experience with it. So we're waiting to see what they say um, because basically we gotta take this out and redo it. And I don't know if we're gonna try to scrape out all the grout or if we're gonna just take up the pebbles. It's a curdy, see the curdy drain here. It's a curdy system. So anyways, also what I'm noticing here, where it gets a lot of water, you know, this is a tight grout joint here. And we've got, this is fusion grout, which isn't supposed to stain. And it's, it's really soft and dark, even in the, even in the tight joints, like it just scrapes right out. So I don't know if we got a bad batch of fusion. That's one thing we're gonna look at too. Yeah, look how look how black this is and black black and soft. Weird. So, so yeah, we got um, I forgot his name. Um, Nick, with custom building products is coming out, so we'll let you know what he says. Cool. This job took place in 2014, and uh, it was over pebbles. And I remember reading on the tub. Well, at least I think. I mean, this was 2014. I mean, I can't, these callbacks when they happen, it's really tough when it's that far away. You don't remember exactly how it goes down, but I remember reading, and I remember on the tub saying it not to use on joints over a half inch, but I do not recall anything about Pebble. And I didn't read the, the data sheet. I just read off the tub, I believe. And so anyways, we used it. So now, Come 2019, I get the call back that this grout is black. And I, I'm like, what the heck? So, you know, I go out there and I'm thinking, you know, okay, so I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like, you know, okay, so let me just call the customs rep. Let me get, a, get them out there. Uh, I had known since then that the literature says do not use it on pebbles, but 
the fact that everywhere else in the bathroom that wasn't wet with the pebble was fine, completely fine. It was only the areas that got a lot of water exposure. I was thinking, you know, well, I can tell them, you know, it worked fine over here in the dry areas. It didn't work in the wet areas. So there's got to be something wrong with this grout. And plus, there are a few grout joints near the pan that get a lot of water, and those had turned black and soft too, and you could scrape them out. Dark, the so I was going to kind of show them that. Well, <laughs> and while we were having the discussion in the shower, it kind of got uncomfortable because I was like, look, man, you're telling me it can't be used on pebbles, yet it's used on pebbles and is fine in the dry areas, but in the wet areas, it just turns black like black all the way through it we like you scrape it out and it's like mush and black i'm like this is a grout problem this isn't has nothing to do with the pebbles because the pebbles are fine in the dry area and it's also happening in the 16th inch grout lines that are pebble and the same thing is happening so this is obviously the grout well we went back and forth and at, at this point he was like well you know i can give you some more grout i'm like dude this is going to take me like two, at least two days of scraping, and then we're going to have to reinstall the grout. I'm like, thanks, but no thanks. You know, I think he said, I'll give you a couple bags of ProLite. And at the time, I, I think I was kind of rude to him and had to write him an email. I'm like, sorry, dude, you know, that's, you're just doing your job. You know, your job is to, to find the loopholes and not pay out claims. I know that. That's what sales reps' jobs are. <laughs> so it was like, but anyways, um, we were stuck with it. So the repair, and I wish I would have taken video of the repair, but I was just kind of upset with it at the time. I was like, you know, this just sucks. And I was kind of through with it. I didn't want to, you know, be filming the job anymore. I was like, let's just get it done. So we scraped out all the grout. We went back in with epoxy grout of the same color. So, I mean, everything's worked fine. This, this was probably six months ago and everything's working fine now so we went back and did it but that's kind of the history behind this job so um, I want to um, I, I want to take this time for all of you who are in the tile industry to be careful with what you think your manufacturers are going to do for you in case in the case that there's an issue because basically these sales reps their job is to not only promote and sell their product, but they are, they're going to they're gonna be the ones who are going to come out to the job. And they pretty much have to find fault in something you do. Because, I mean, right, in their, their eyes, their product is, is good and work. It's tested. So if, if there's uh, if any fault, it's going to be the installer. I'm, I guess there's probably the rare case that they have a bad batch of something and at that point, you would still have to have the actual product that you put in so they could test it. If you don't, they're not going to be able to test it. And, you know, so that that's one thing. And also, I mean, a lot of the sales reps, they come off as your friends. And again, that's part of their job is to be friendly with you, you know, maybe buy you lunch, have a beer with you, golf with you, whatever it is. And you might think they're your friends and you have this loyalty to them, but I guarantee the minute that you either stop using their products or you have something negative to say about their product, they don't care anymore. And that's just the fact. I have a lot of people who are like super loyal to one brand and they're like, these are my, you know, this is my brand and, and you think that they're going to have your back, dude. I've done a lot of tile, I've done, used a lot of products. We have a company that's cranking out installs all the time. And, and unless you're using their product, they're not your friends. So take care of yourself, um, do your own testing, keep an open mind, don't go into, I mean, I see so much stuff that, that people are like so set on one brand. They're like, no, this is what I do. And they're, dude, I mean, man, they're not like that for you. I guarantee it. They are not thinking of you like that. You're an ends to their means, and the minute you stop using the product, they're not going to be there. They're not your friends. They're there to sell a product. So use what you're comfortable with. Use what you believe in. Keep an open mind and try new products. 
you might like one product from another brand better, use it. You know, they're gonna come back and say, oh, well, it's not under warranty. Guess what, buddy? It's not under warranty anyways because if something fails, it's your fault. Guaranteed, that's bottom line. Their job is to find a loophole in your installation, your practice, that they can put you at fault for. Because the last thing they wanna do is be cutting a big check. Anyways, food for thought, guys. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. My videos are here to encourage and inspire you to get into the building trades. They've given me a great life. I make a great living doing what I do, and I love what I do. I love building, I love creating. So if you are watching this video and you're sitting behind a desk and you hate your freaking job and you wanna get out of it, talk to the community, communicate with people in the, the comment below. You'll, get, you'll start to network with people. Uh, find me on Instagram. Uh, keep an open mind, man. Just because you're doing a job right now doesn't mean you have to do it the rest of your life. Your job is so much of your life. If you're unhappy in your job, you're unhappy in life, bottom line, just because we're at work so much. So do what you love to do, do what you are meant to do. And I'm, hey, I'm not bagging on people who are at a desk job. I mean, some of us, that's, that's where we thrive. That's where our purpose is. That's where we feel good. Maybe we like to manage. Maybe we like to, to just kind of create work on a computer and a desk. I don't know, but I'm not really cut out that way. And if you aren't, then maybe it's time to make a change. So I love you guys. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.